Ladies and gentlemen, welcome for our ninth launch of the year from the Guyana Space Center, the fifth with Ariane 5 in 2015. Tonight, Ariane 5 is set to deliver into a standard geostationary transfer orbit two telecommunication satellites, SkyMaster for NBN and ARSAT 2 for ARSAT. Ariane 5 will be required a performance of 10.2 tons. It will have a window of 1 hour and 45 minutes to lift off, opening precisely at 8.30 p.m. Universal Time. The mission will last approximately 32 minutes and a half. I would like to thank NBN for entrusting Ariane Space with the launch of its first satellite. As part of the national broadband program promoted by the Australian government, Sky Mustard, manufactured by Space System Laurels in Palo Alto, will enable to bring high-speed internet access to remote and rural areas of Australia, as well as to several islands in the Pacific Ocean. I am also grateful to ARSAT for its decision to select Ion Space again for the launch of its second satellite after the successful orbiting of ARSAT-1 in October last year. Manufactured by INVAP in Bariloche, which has developed a unique capability in Latin America regarding geostationary satellites design and manufacturing, ARSAT-2 will provide direct-to-home television, internet access, data transmission and IP telephone services above the Americas. Tonight, Ion Space is particularly proud to bring tailored launch solutions to two endeavors contributing to the digital divide reduction. But our 80-second Ion 5 is now being ready for liftoff, so enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. I'm Harry Thibodeau, and I welcome our global audience to Kourou French Guiana for tonight's launch. My comments are also being translated into French this evening. The fifth Ariane 5 of 2015 is on the pad. It's uh, early evening, late afternoon here on the edge of the Amazon rainforest, 500 kilometers, 300 miles north of the equator. It's uh, been fabulous weather here all week long. It is very hot. Uh, there is uh, the shot from Jupiter, and back out to the pad, there is the star of tonight's broadcast, the Ariane 5 ECA. She stands over 50 meters tall and tips the scales at 774 tons tonight. We're using a 17-meter fairing. Its job is to protect the satellites during the early stages of the flight and uh, while they've been here on the ground. SkyMaster rides in the top position. It's a huge satellite, one of the largest commercial telecom satellites ever made, a mass of 6,440 kilograms. That's uh, a little over 14,000 pounds. And RSAT-2 is in the lower position tonight. Under the SILDA weighs 3,000 kilos. More on them later. The launch window tonight, as Stefan Israel said, opens at 5.30 p.m. Karu time, closes an hour and 45 minutes later. There's Stefan Israel, chairman and CEO of Ariane Space. Other officials, Louis Laurent, the senior VP of programs for Ariane Space. Next is Eduardo Perez, and he's the Senior VP of Engineering and the Technical Mastermind of the Ariane family of launchers. And Patrick Lore, the uh, Ariane uh, person in charge of the French Guiana uh, uh, launch assembly here. Time now to uh, take uh, a look at SkyMuster. Ariane Space is happy to welcome a new customer, NBN, through a launch contract signed in 2012 for a total of two satellites. 
SkyMuster will help deliver world-class broadband services to the rural and remote Australians. This will include offering better opportunities for social connectivity, distance education online through use of video conferencing, improved access to specialist telehealth applications in the home, and exciting new opportunities for businesses. SkyMaster is built by SSL, celebrating their 100-1300 platform. The wonderful drawing on the fairing is by six-year-old Bailey Brooks, the winner of our Shoot for the Stars competition. I'm pleased to continue the rich and fruitful teamwork for the launch of the second satellite, planned to be launched next year for NBN. We have enjoyed working with both Ariane Space and SSL, who are two of our major partners on this project, and we look forward to working with them again on the launch of our second satellite. And all is green for our fifth Arian 5 launch of 2015. Sky Muster is going to change the lives for countless Australians, including that six-year-old uh, Bailey Brooks of Lila Creek Station, who designed the drawing on the fairing. More on that later. But uh, it is uh, time now uh, for us to turn our attention to our second passenger, RSAT-2. Hello! For this fifth Ariane 5 mission of the year, Ariane Space is really happy to welcome again the Argentinian operator ARSAT. ARSAT 2 is our first satellite to provide telecom services in Sivan for the American continent and is the second geo satellite designed, assembly, integrated, and tested in Argentina. It will also provide telecom services in Cayuban for South and North America. Our SATU satellite is the second in a series of geostationary satellites that will reinforce Argentina with its own space telecommunication system. It will be located at 81 degree west longitude geostationary slot. This is the second time our SAT contracts are in space for the launch of its satellites. We want to thank the contribution of this key partner as well as the rest of our subcontractors to the success of this mission and especially the Arsat and Imbab teams that have been working all along the project. We are back at Jupiter where we will witness the 68th successful Ariane 5 launch in a row, closing in on a critical mark, the seven minute mark before launch. And you're gonna hear the announcement from the DDO. Stop, I zero my set minute. And there it is, we've entered the synchronized sequence. Things are gonna happen really fast now. Computers are assuming more and more control over the flight, making final checks and settings uh, for the launch. And tonight is the culmination of a month of nonstop work here at CSG. Let's take a look at the launch campaign that got us to this point. After sailing 8,000 kilometers from Europe, the Ariane 5 launcher arrived in French Guiana. At CSG, the initial assembly began on August 12th, continued through September 8th. That included mating with the two solid rocket boosters and then the cryogenic upper stage and the equipment box. We then transferred the launcher to the BAF, the building of final assembly where it found its two passengers. Sky Muster arrived at CSG August 27th, joining AirSat 2 that had already been waiting in a clean room. The two satellite teams checked every detail of the payloads that had taken several years to build. Only when all tests were done did we fuel the satellites. At the BAF, the satellites were attached to the launcher. AirSat 2 rides in the lower position covered by the Silva. Sky Muster is mounted on top of the Silva then the fairing encases the entire satellite composite. On September 28th, the launch readiness review gave the green light to head to the pad. Yesterday, the launcher, satellites, and the mobile launch table, a total of 1,760 metric tons, were towed to the launch pad, all by one very special truck. BA-226 is on the pad and ready to fly. And we're under five minutes now to launch, and we see another fantastic shot of the Ariane 5 
All of the status panel there is green in, uh, in Koru. Green means go. Total payload tonight over 10 metric tons, uh, 10,203 kilos for those who want to be exact. 9,400 of that made up by our two satellites, SkyMuster and RSAT-2. The rest of uh, the mass uh, this evening uh, will be comprised of support structures you'll hear us talking about, including the SILDA, which covers RSAT-2, and it uh, serves as the base for SkyMuster uh, to be attached to. And uh, you see just a gorgeous late afternoon bathed in sunlight here at uh, Kourou. Uh, we are looking now at the highly skilled engineers who work in a building called CDL-3. It's located very close to the launch pad. Uh, I've been there a couple of times, and it's actually uh, built like a bunker. The walls and the roof are literally several feet thick. In the event of an emergency, that building can be sealed off to the outside world. Four groups of people work there and are very busy right now. The launch operations team, the Ariane program uh, production team, the quality management team for Ariane, and the safety team for uh, tonight's launch. And uh, they are monitoring all of the technical aspects of the launcher, the payloads. Tonight they'll be responsible for number 399 and 400 satellite to be carried into orbit by an Arion family of launchers. Coming back to Jupiter now, you see the green board there up on the left-hand side. All remains go for launch. The excitement uh, continues to build as we close under the three-minute mark. In two and a half minutes or so from now, Arian 5 is going to roar to life, and it will uh, send SkyMuster and RSAT-2 into space. Final series of computer checks being done to configure the booster for flight. Years of hard work by thousands of skilled technicians from around the world are about to uh, culminate uh, with uh, the launch uh, coming up uh, this evening. And again, another shot of the launch pad. And you see it's uh, it's a beautiful late afternoon uh, here in Kourou. So we take the close-up. You see those yellow arms that reach out to the rocket? Uh, we call them the bra here in uh, Kourou. Uh, they're not actually holding the rocket up. That's been done by gravity. Uh, the arms support the fueling hoses that keep the rocket's fuel tank topped off. That's necessary because it is uh, a very cold, that fuel is, and it boils off in the hot, humid air as Amazon rainforest. Let me tell you, it is hot here today underneath the sun. Uh, the arms will pull back just moments uh, before launch. Uh, we are closing in on the last 90 seconds of the countdown. The VIPs here at Jupiter are heading out. I'm watching them now as they head out to the balcony to witness the launch. They'll have a great view as the Ariane 5 powers off the pad and thunders out over Devil's Island. Made popular, of course, by the movie Papillon, and that's just a few miles from us now. The next big milestone, the DDO is going to announce the one minute mark in uh, the countdown. You're going to hear that in a couple of seconds. Stop, moins une minute. Okay, we welcome everybody around the world viewing us on arianspace.com. Special greetings to the people watching live in Argentina through the public television from uh, Technopolis at RSAT headquarters, also at INVAP headquarters, Airbus Defense and Space in Europe, NBN has viewing parties all across the country, SSL has a viewing party in Palo Alto, California, and of course a personal greeting to my co-workers at Biosat all around the world. We built the complex ground segment equipment for SkyMuster. Oh, and six-year-old Bailey Brooks, here it comes. We're going to launch your satellite, SkyMuster. A tous les DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain. 
Allumage de ZEAP, décollage. trademark to call it the rumble in the Amazon jungle and it really is as the mighty Ariane 5 ECA roars out toward Devil's Island one of those bucket list events to have watching an Ariane 5 thunder into the sky from CSG a minute into the launch and the Ariane 5 has already broken the sound barrier here at Corvu and this massive Jupiter facility Literally shaking, we can feel it now. 1,300 tons of thrust breaking the Ariane 5, free from the bonds of Earth's gravity. 90% of that power coming from the two boosters, each one 31 meters tall, burning 240 tons of solid propellant in two minutes. That's better than two tons a second. When the boosters have done their job in a little less than a minute from right now, Ariane will be 70 kilometers into the sky. It'll be racing away from us at more than 1.6 kilometers a second, faster than a bullet. The information coming down to us at Gilat, the tracking station on a mountain just behind us here at the Jupiter facility. The next major event is the burnout and the jettison of those two solid rocket boosters you're going to be able to see it live on the screen it'll happen in about uh, 13 seconds from right now when those boosters have uh, completed uh, their job at uh, two minutes 20 seconds into the mission so watch for that And look at those pictures. In the clear skies above Karu, the boosters have uh, done their job. We don't need them anymore. Talk about losing weight. On the pad, Arian 5 was 774 tons, roughly. We're now down to 180 tons. And in the rocket business, when you get lighter, you go a lot faster. And there you see some video from a previous mission of uh, the rockets, uh, the boosters dropping away. Ariane 5 now closing in on 100 kilometers in the sky, traveling at 150, uh, make that uh, 2.8, uh, 2.1 kilometers uh, per second. Speed number tonight, by the way, 9.3 is the uh, magic number. Next up, the jettison of the fairing. It's protected the satellites from the elements on the ground. And in the early days of launch, early moments of launch, we don't need it anymore, and so very shortly, you are going to see and hear, there it is, on the animation. Separation de la coiffe. And the DDO has announced it. Here's uh, the fairing uh, dropping away from us uh, this evening on the flight. We just lost another uh, two tons, by the way. There's some images from a previous mission. Technically, we were in space, but we still have a long way to go but uh, things are going fine for Ariane 5. And we continue to uh, see the 3D animation. We're at 128 uh, kilometers into uh, uh, the sky and already 300 kilometers uh, downrange uh, from us here at uh, Karu and closing in on three uh, kilometers uh, per second. The main stage, or EPC, is now burning. It uh, burns for about Special greetings minutes. to the people watching live in Argentina and, uh, through the public the television from uh, Technopolis at RSAT the, headquarters, uh, also at INVAP headquarters. It uh, gulps uh, 320 kilograms, about 700 uh, pounds of fuel a second, 500 times more than a uh, jet engine. Uh, you just saw that... Uh, graph on the side of the screen. We're going to see that a whole lot more tonight. And that depicts uh, the uh, trajectory that we want to uh, be going in uh, this evening. And again, we are right down the middle. Uh, everything is going normal, as you heard the uh, DDO 
uh, just announced. 152 kilometers into uh, the sky uh, right now, Gilat is uh, the tracking station that is uh, tracking us uh, right now. And things continue to uh, go uh, normal uh, this evening on the uh, Ariane flight. We're going to be seeing some replays coming up in a moment. And again, uh, very, very impressive uh, replays uh, from the pad. Those will be coming in a second. You see the uh, 3D images of what's happening uh, right now uh, in the uh, sky. Here's the first of those replays we mentioned. Il reste three minutes de propulsion de l'EPC. La trajectoire est nominale. Just incredible to watch that Ariane 5 jump off the pad. You know, one of the uh, questions that I frequently get when people ask me, uh, why am I going to French Guiana to launch a rocket? Well, the Kourou Space Base is located about uh, 500 kilometers north of the equator, and the Earth rotates much faster at the equator than it does, say, at the Kennedy Space in Florida. Thus, the uh, Ariane 5 gets a huge boost from the Earth's rotation, and that allows satellite operators, as you see another great replay here, uh, that allows satellite operators in many cases to launch heavier payloads and to add more fuel to their bird, increasing their operational life. And thus, uh, the longer it lives up there, the more revenue you can generate. So the bottom line is it really does pay off in the long run to launch your satellite from the Amazon jungle. And uh, there you see the uh, planification minister from Argentina, who is uh, here with us uh, this evening. Also, uh, Jean-Michel uh, Casa, who is the French ambassador uh, to Argentina. Just some of the dignitaries who uh, are here this evening at uh, Kourou. The Ariane 5, uh, by the way, will uh, shortly uh, be picked up by our uh, tracking Project station nominal. in Natal, Brazil. You see that everything remains nominal. There's that curve that I was talking about. Take a look at that real quick up on the right-hand side. And that uh, little dot is what you want to see following that curve perfectly, and it is. That means we're going uh, right down the middle. Uh, tonight, uh, we are going to be using uh, five tracking stations. Karu has de la the uh, pour la station. Natal, uh, station. station. Brazil is Natal. Then out in the middle of the Atlantic is the Ascension Islands. And uh, we have a tracking station there. The west coast of Africa is uh, Liberville, uh, Gibbon. And on the east coast, uh, Melindy, Kenya. Arian sending data to those stations, and uh, it tells Project us how the flight nominal. is progressing in real time. That's why the DDO can say things are nominal. Uh, later, engineers are going to pour over every bit of the data to determine exactly how things uh, worked. Next major event is the cutoff of the main stage, or the EPC. You're going to see that blue flame disappear. Uh, and you'll see the separation of the main stage. There is the extinction of the flame. And shortly, the main stage has completed its job. It drops away. It's going to fall into the ocean de l'EPC. off Africa. And uh, shortly, you'll hear the call that the upper stage has ignited. It'll burn for 16 minutes. Great video from a previous flight of the, the first uh, stage dropping away. You heard the announcement from the DDO that the upper stage has ignited. Before ignition, by the way, two small rockets on either side of the upper stage fired. That allowed the upper stage to move away from the lower stage, and we could safely ignite it. Uh, by the way, immediately after they did their job, we dumped them off because lighter rockets uh, fly uh, faster. And there you see, again, the depictions of our tracking stations. We're now going very, very fast. We're at over 
which is zero seven, almost 7.1 at kilometers per second. Ariane 5 is well on its way to Africa. It's gaining speed by the second. And uh, we're seeing some of the key personnel and the VIPs in the auditorium right below my broadcast location here. And uh, most of them arrived uh, yesterday here in Nikoru. They've been touring the space base uh, throughout uh, the last day or so. And they have the best seat in the house uh, for uh, the mission. History is being made uh, tonight by uh, SkyMuster. One of the most powerful telecom satellites ever, SkyMuster carries 202 KA band transponders that will deliver high speed broadband service to an estimated 200,000 plus households in rural and remote Australia. SkyMuster represents the cutting edge of so called high throughput satellite capacity and technology. Combining extremely powerful KA band satellite payloads with advanced ground segment networking software and hardware technology, SkyMuster will deliver ultra fast broadband service to consumers and businesses in uh, and across Australia. Biosat, the company I work for, built 10 massive earth stations and gateway facilities all across the continent. Once Sky Muster goes into operation, the life of Bailey Brooks, that little six-year-old girl we talked about, uh, who emerged as the face of the satellite, her painting uh, was on the fairing of the Ariane 5. All of her friends, uh, their lives will change forever as broadband will be at uh, their fingertips. And uh, that is going to be a life-changing experience uh, for little uh, uh, Bailey uh, Brooks. At 11 minutes and uh, 48 seconds, time now to hear about uh, Sky Muster. SSL a leader in providing highly advanced satellites for high-speed broadband access, built SkyMuster, formerly known as NBN Co. 1A for NBN. NBN's goal is to ensure all Australians have access to fast broadband and connect 8 million Australian homes and businesses to the NBN network by 2020. The rollout of the NBN network will enable Australia's greater participation in the digital economy and help bridge the digital divide between young and old, city and country, and between Australia and the rest of the world. SkyMuster is the first of two high-throughput satellites that extend Australia's new broadband network to provide fast broadband access to households and businesses in rural and remote Australia. This satellite service is going to be quite an advanced satellite service because we have state-of-the-art satellites that have been built for it, in addition, we've got uh, 10 ground stations that will be operating with state-of-the-art software and equipment that's the latest in technology to ensure that our user experience is as good as it can possibly be. SkyMuster is one of the biggest, most powerful broadband spacecraft ever made. At launch, it will weigh 6,400 kilograms. It has 101 spot beams and will provide high-speed internet to hundreds of thousands of people. SkyMuster is the 100th 1300 satellite that SSL has delivered, and there are more 1300 satellites on orbit providing service today than any other satellite model. As a robust, flight-proven platform that has continually evolved to incorporate innovation and advanced technologies, the 1300 provides the power and capacity needed for service precisely tailored to Australia's highly geographically varied user distribution. This program's success is a direct result of SSL's excellent relationship with NBN. From the beginning, we've been in complete alignment with NBN's management style and work ethic, which has culminated in this huge accomplishment.
SSL and NBN are both committed to providing solutions that improve people's lives. Our first satellite, SkyMaster, was named as a result of a school children's competition and we had children across Australia send in their original artwork showing how NBN is going to make Australia a better place to live. And our winner, Bailey Brooks, is a six-year-old girl who lives on a remote cattle station uh, in the middle of the country in Northern Territory. She's 400 kilometres from Alice Springs and she attends school via the School of the Air. And this means that her and her other classmates are hundreds of kilometres apart. They attend school via a satellite link um, to their teacher who's back in Alice Springs. They get to see their teacher and maybe one or two other students on the screen at any one time. And the interesting thing is that her mother went to School of the Air when she was a kid and she did that via radio. So there's already been one advancement. When NBN comes along, they'll be able to see each other with a lot of more uh, video content. They'll be able to see a lot more of their classmates uh, at one time. So that will be a great improvement for her. But her, her classmates and herself with her teacher's help were able to choose the name of our satellite. And Sky Muster is to help depict the fact that mustering of cattle brings the cattle together. The Sky Muster satellite will help bring Australians together via their high-speed internet services. SSL was selected for this program in part because of its broadband experience, but also because of the high caliber of people. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the people at SSL for all that you've done to get us here today. Thank you. SSL also thanks NBN for the opportunity to work together on this important satellite and Ariana Spas for the successful launch campaign. It takes skill, dedication, and commitment to build a satellite as complex and capable as SkyMuster. Just as the satellite will improve communications in Australia and bring people together, it was NBN, SSL, and Ariana Spas working together as a team that has made SkyMuster a success. As we return to Jupiter, a little over 17 minutes into the mission during the film, Ariane 5 was acquired by our tracking station on Ascension Island in the Atlantic. All is going well. As you heard, years of hard work have gone into SkyMuster and the entire NBN project. And uh, some of the people that uh, made it all happen, of course, are here uh, this evening. And you'll be seeing uh, them. Uh, and uh, there is uh, the satellite mission director from NBN. And it's a big night for them, of course. And as we uh, slide across, the SkyMuster launch manager for SSL, uh, Grant Gould, and uh, others uh, that are being uh, pictured here, uh, David Walters uh, from uh, NBN as Sky Muster. Uh, so all is well uh, with uh, the Ariane 5 as it continues to uh, do its job. 171 kilometers up in the sky, 8.3 uh, kilometers per second. Sky Muster is the 19th Laurel satellite to ride on an Ariane rocket. Current Ariane space backlog includes 13 SSL satellites. One of them is a twin sister uh, to Sky Muster. It will uh, launch uh, later uh, next uh, year. Uh, riding below Sky Muster and under the SILDA, the black structure you just saw that uh, makes uh, dual satellite launches possible, is RSAT-2. It's a three-ton satellite built by INVAP, carrying 26 KU and 10 C-band transponders. It will serve the Americas from Argentina to Canada. Its final home, 81 degrees west, with a three-axis stabilized satellite, will operate for the next 15 years. It's the second satellite RSAT has entrusted to Ariane Space, and the third one that uh, we have launched uh, for Argentina. Uh, back in 1997, we placed Nihil 1A into orbit from CSG for Nihilsat. And uh, looking quickly, 200 uh, kilometers uh, into the sky. Now we're really moving away from us fast. Uh, uh, what are we at? Uh, five, uh, 6,000 uh, kilometers away from us and almost nine uh, kilometers uh, per second. Again, target number 9.3. Let's hear more about RSAT-2.
con el ARSAT-2, la Argentina pone en órbita su segundo satélite de telecomunicaciones y refuerza su compromiso de ocupar las posiciones orbitales asignadas al país con satélites propios, impulsar el desarrollo de la industria espacial local. Además, asume nuevos desafíos para posicionar al país como proveedor de servicios satelitales en el continente y facilitar la exportación de contenidos audiovisuales producidos en Latinoamérica. El ARSAT-2 se ubicará a los 81 grados de longitud oeste. Tiene tres antenas, una desplegable y otra fija, que transmiten en banda CAU y otra desplegable que emite en banda C. Su área de servicio incluye el continente americano en tres coberturas, sudamericana, norteamericana y hemisférica. Su masa total de lanzamiento es de 3 toneladas. ARSAT es la empresa nacional a cargo de vehiculizar el desarrollo de los satélites geoestacionarios de telecomunicaciones en el país. Realizó la especificación del ARSAT-2 y supervisó todas las etapas de la misión. INVAP es la empresa estatal de alta tecnología de la provincia de Río Negro, encargada del desarrollo del satélite. Los ensayos ambientales que atravesó el ARSAT-2 recrearon las condiciones de lanzamiento y la vida en el espacio. También fueron realizados en Argentina, en el Centro de Ensayos de Alta Tecnología, SEATSA, de ARSAT e INVAP. La estación terrena Benavides de ARSAT dirigirá la puesta en órbita del satélite para llevarlo a la órbita geoestacionaria. Con el ARSAT-2 será la segunda vez que un país latinoamericano diseña y desarrolla un satélite de telecomunicaciones, dirige su puesta en órbita y explota el servicio sin intermediarios. Este satélite permite iluminar las tres Américas para brindar servicios de televisión, internet, datos y telefonía sobre IP desde la tundra canadiense hasta la península antártica. La transmisión en banda CAU del ARSAT-2 refuerza la misión territorial y socialmente integradora del primer satélite geoestacionario argentino a nivel nacional. Su banda C agrega dos ventajas en cobertura panamericana. No sufre atenuación por lluvias y es la primera opción para la transmisión satelital de televisión, lo que permitirá favorecer la exportación de contenido audiovisuales. Muy pocos países en el mundo fabrican satélites geoestacionarios. Con el ARSAT-1, Argentina se sumó a este grupo. Con el ARSAT-2, redoblamos la apuesta para llegar otra vez a lo más alto, pero más alto. Soberanía nacional, soberanía satelital, eso también es dar impulso a un país. Back at Jupiter, and again, all is well. The Ariane 5 is now uh, closing in on uh, the coast of Africa. Amazing to think that in less than 25 minutes, we've gone from here in Carhu uh, all the way over uh, to Africa, crossing uh, the Atlantic Ocean. The upper stage of the Ariane 5, nearing uh, the end of its uh, 16 minutes of work, Again, uh, we're 420 uh, kilometers into the sky. Speed is really increasing now. We're up uh, well over nine kilometers a second. And the magic number again tonight, 9.3 uh, kilometers per second for uh, the uh, completion of uh, the burn. Uh, when we reach that number, the Ariane 5 powered flight or boost phase will be over. Those numbers, especially speed, are virtually impossible. You see thumbs up from Uh, this evening, uh, that uh, virtually impossible to imagine. Consider this, the fastest man is Usain Bolt, and uh, he runs uh, 10 meters a second. The fastest car, let's call it a Ferrari, at about 100 meters a second. Sound is 300 meters a second. A bullet travels at 1,000 meters a second, roughly. And the Ariane 5 tonight is right now at over nine times faster than a speeding bullet. Uh, it's in a foot race with Superman right now, uh, and uh, I think I know who's winning. Uh, the work of uh, the upper stage is uh, nearing its end. Uh, we've got uh, just a little under a minute uh, to go uh, before it uh, will have completed uh, its mission of uh, getting us uh, to our initial insertion point Uh, in the sky. Again, everything uh, continues to go perfectly right down the middle uh, for another uh, fabulous launch uh, here at uh, Kourou. And again, this will be number 399 and number 400 payloads for an Ariane 
family of launcher. Uh, we're under 20 seconds now before uh, we will see and hear the extinction of the upper stage. I'll let you watch that animation. And very shortly. Fin de propulsion de l'étage supérieur cryotechnique. There you go, the announcement made by the DDO. And uh, the ESC has completed the propulsion stage of the mission. Now events are going to really start to happen quickly. We've entered the ballistic stage. Engineers here call it the SCAR phase. But for normal people like you and I, uh, we refer to it as the space ballet. The powerful computers on board the Ariane 5 are making the calculations to align the vehicle precisely for the next steps. So let's assess where we are right now. We're high enough. We're going fast enough. The boosters and the two stages of the Ariane 5 have done their job. The need for raw power is over now. Now it's all about pinpoint precision, and that's when the Real science in rocket science kicks in. The upper stage actually has a brain. It's actually a very, very powerful computer. It's called the Vehicle Assembly Bay, or it's housed there, the VEB. Even more than a computer, it's a whole flight management system. It can make decisions quickly. It's very, very smart. Takes into account a mountain of information coming from the fuel tanks, the engines, all the different data. If there are different options, it always chooses the one that maximizes success for the mission. Right now, the rocket needs to know where is it at at every moment, where it has to go, what has to be done to get there. And that's what we call GNC, Guidance, Navigation, and Control. Uh, that's one of the primary subsystems on the launcher. The first step of the space ballet, orient the launcher for the release of Sky Muster. And that is done by several small rockets on the side of the launcher. The pointing has to be uh, very exact. Needless to say, years of hard work by everyone involved in the Sky Muster program. Coming down to the next few seconds, a set of springs are going to release Sky Muster at precisely the correct moment. And special words again to Bailey Brooks little six-year-old girl, and she's about to see and witness her satellite, the one she named, be uh, separated and go on its way for years of service over the Australian continent and literally change the way Australia lives and does business. There you see the handshakes as uh, the... Separation de Sky Muster. There it is, the announcement, and you see it on the screen. Sky Muster separating. It's on its way in the dreams of six-year-old Bailey Brooks in Northwest Territory of Australia, taking a huge step toward reality. Congratulations, Bailey. There is a new star in the sky over your home uh, tonight. And uh, while you see smiles, the tradition here at Koru is to hold the applause till the satellites uh, have both uh, been separated. The Aryan family launchers have now done it 399 times. Number 400 is only a couple of minutes away. Now the next act of the space ballet, we need to turn that composite away from the direction we just sent Bailey's satellite in. Then we need to prepare to jettison the silver, the black structure. It's a uh, small fairing. It's the secret sauce of the Ariane 5. It makes possible dual satellite launches. It's protected RSAT-2 on the ground, provide the base upon which we put Sky Muster. We want to be sure we send it away from either of the two satellites. The precision of what you're going to be seeing now simply can't be understated. Imagine what's happening. That composite, and it has the Silda and RSAT-2, they're half a world away over Australia, or over Africa, rather. They're racing along more than nine kilometers a second, nine times the speed of a bullet. And if you've ever seen uh, the movie Gravity, you know bad things happen when even the smallest piece of debris collides with a satellite. That Silda is five meters tall. It weighs over five hundred kilograms and we have to be sure that we jettison it 
successfully and uh, that will be happening Separation du système de lancement double Ariane There you go That announcement means that the Silva has been separated and jettisoned and our set 2 is seeing the sun for the first time over or will very shortly over Africa. Uh, yet another act of the space ballet begins. The onboard computers are calculating the exact course change necessary now to drop off our Sat 2. Obviously, we don't want it to collide with either SkyMuster or the Silda. And a whole lot more rocket science and orbital physics coming into play uh, right now. You see the excitement building. And the space ballet continues as we pair, prepare for the separation of our set two. That will happen at about uh, 32 and a half minutes into uh, flight. So our folks at our set have a minute and a half or so uh, to uh, to wait for this. You'll recall that uh, you know we talked about all of the various data that comes down from the telemetry stations. Well. We use that data that came from the tracking stations uh, at a very special facility because it pours down from the Ariane 5. It arrives at what we call the CVI. It's located inside that Galio tracking station on the mountain just south of me here. And there's a four-person team called the Immediate Visual Control Team. They monitor 150 critical parameters in real time out of more than 1,000 that are coming in. The rest of that data is stored on massive hard drives, and it will be analyzed over the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, that allows the engineers to determine exactly how every system uh, performed. We're back at uh, Jupiter now, and the orbital ballet continues. Uh, the upper stage and our set 2 being configured for the right uh, position. And again, uh, we're less than 30 seconds away from this place exploding with excitement over the placement of the 400th satellite to be separated from an Ariane launcher. Début de la mise en spin. And they're spinning up the satellite, getting ready. Should happen about 28 seconds after. Separation Arsat 2. There it is. There's the announcement that uh, the separation has occurred. Aryan Space has delivered again. Number 400. Look at the celebration. Even the flags breaking out uh, here at Jupiter. We'll let you enjoy it for a moment. And uh, again, talk about uh, some great uh, joy. Yeah, I've heard it described as having a baby because some of these people have worked for literally years on these projects. And one can only imagine the uh, thrill of what has culminated in, what, less than 40 minutes from the launch till now. Be watching as continued handshakes and cheers take place. By the way, don't leave us. Uh, there's going to be uh, some great replays. <laughs> it's really getting uh, exciting down here as people cheer and wave that uh, Argentine flag. And then we're going to have uh, some key speeches uh, given uh, this evening. A lot of work uh, went into this. And we're going to be seeing some replays coming up in a moment. And here you go. Let's take a look again. The mighty Arian 5 delivers 399 and 400. As the NBN staff with some thumbs up. Replay again. 
could watch this all night long. I've seen it many times here at Carvu. And the heavyweight champion of the launch industry has delivered again tonight. Incredible. First time I was here was in 2007. And I've enjoyed every single time. <laughs> More flags breaking out. More photos. I heard it was going to be quite a party, and it looks like it is. <laughs> More cheering. Hello. Another replay that you see. And again, letting you enjoy the ambient sound and the excitement here at Jupiter. Shortly, we are going to uh, be hearing from the key officials, both from Arion Space and from our payloads and contractors uh, this evening. And again, this is the 226th flight of an Ariane rocket, 269th launch overall of the Ariane space family of launchers. The 68th success in a row for an Ariane 5. 68 times in a row we've made it happen for a variety of customers uh, all over the world. Actually, the 517th and 518th satellites to be launched by uh, Arian Space total. And the 166th and 167th to go up on an Arian 5. And like we said, 399 and 400th by an Arian family of launchers. Pictures continue, celebration continues, and again, speeches. We uh -huh. see that uh, Stefan Israel has come to the podium, chairman and CEO of Arian Space. You'll hear from him next. So, dear. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, dear uh, Minister De Vido, dear Excellency Jean-Michel Casa, French Ambassador in Argentina, dear customers, distinguished guests, Ariane Space is delighted to announce that SkyMuster and ARSAT 2 were separated as planned on their targeted standard geostationary transfer orbits. Tonight, Ariane Space is happy to celebrate Ariane 5's 68th success in a row, 
with two regional operators coming from two great nations of the southern hemisphere, Australia and Argentina, with whom we have established strong partnership. I must say that tonight we had a duty not only for two customers, and it's always important to deliver for your customers, but really for two nations, and we delivered. In upper position, SkyMuster is the first satellite of NBN. This satellite, together with the second one, aims at reducing the digital divide on the Australian continent and on several islands of the Pacific Ocean by providing remote and rural areas with access to high-speed internet. Let me thus take this opportunity to deeply thank Mr. Sigmund Zwitkowski, NBN's chairman, for entrusting Iron Space with the launch of his two satellites. We know how critical these satellites are for the NBN project, and therefore we are very grateful for being recognized as the reference launch solution in your development plan. We will be on track to deliver into orbit your second satellite next year. Let me also congratulate SSL and its president, John Selly, with us tonight here in Jupiter. SkyMuster is indeed the 50-second geostationary spacecraft built upon an SSL bus to be launched by Ariane Space, the fourth in uh, 2050. We have 13 more SSL satellites to be orbited by our launch vehicle family. Our long-standing cooperation is to continue. In lower position, ARSAT-2 is the second satellite launched by Ariane Space for ARSAT, following ARSAT-1 launch in October 2040. ARSAT-2 will enable ARSAT to increase its capacity to deliver various telecommunication services above the Americas, including direct-to-home television and data transmission. I just want to express my gratitude to ARSAT's chairman and CEO, Matthias Bianchi, for entrusting Ariane Space with the launch of these two satellites, but also for being so faithful to Ariane Space. Indeed, and you made that before the launch, I must say that I am a little bit superstitious. So, but you chose to sign before the launch. And uh, we signed uh, earlier today, uh, this afternoon, a service agreement for ARSAT-3 to be flown in 2019, which includes two more options to continue our cooperation until 2023. So we will have the opportunity to, to see each other here and in Buenos Aires, at least. So, muchísimas gracias por su confianza. Our partnership has only been possible thanks to the support of the Argentinian government, who once decided to kick off a very ambitious national program to develop Argentina capabilities in the field of satellite telecommunication. Let me associate to these thanks Mr. Julio De Vido, Minister of Planning and Public Investment, with us tonight. Dear Minister, it is a great honor to welcome you one more time in CSG here in French Guiana, especially in a day which saw France and Argentina getting even closer to each other through the signature of a space cooperation agreement. It was done also late, uh, earlier this afternoon. I want also to thank Jean-Michel Casa, our French ambassador in Argentina, for his continuous and uh, efficient involvement in our partnership with Argentina and in this agreement. This agreement would not have been possible without the effort of both Minister De Vido and Ambassador Casa. Last but not least, congratulations to INVAP, ARSAT2 Manufacturers, and its chairman, Horacio Augusto Osuna, for delivering its second geostationary spacecraft in less than one year. Tonight, Ariane Space has completed 75% of our 2015 roadmap, with nine launches in nine months. We are fully in line with our Buzzy manifest targeting up to 12 launches this year, contemplating for three more in the last quarter, one with every vehicle of our family. Launch after launch, success after success, Ariane Space demonstrates its capability to increase its launch rates while remaining the most reliable space transportation solution for all customers whether commercial or institutional, whether GTO or non-GTO. I wish to congratulate, congratulate all our partners for this success story. ESA, prime contractor of the Ariane program. 
industry led by, led by Airbus Safran launchers to deliver to us this outstanding launcher. I want to have here a special word for ASL because today they made a coup double. Something happened uh, uh, with uh, deterrence uh, this morning and it was also a success. I want to thank CNES CLG and our grand industrialists for their continuous support and for sure all Ariane Space team for their 100% commitment towards our customers. I want to thank our uh, sales team, uh, Florent Dei, Tony Thomas, uh, and all the teams who made this uh, uh, success tonight possible and this uh, long-term partnership with our customers. All together, you have made the difference tonight. All together, you deserve a triple A as for Australia, Argentina, and Iron Space. So I now leave the floor to our dear customers and partners. Thank you very much and enjoy this evening. Thank you, Stefan, for those gracious and expert comments. Good evening, distinguished guests, one and all. My name is Ziggy Switkowski and I'm the chairman of NBN. And on behalf of that company and all of my colleagues, can I say how thrilled I am to have been part of the successful launch of Sky Muster today. I notice that the uh, Ariane uh, launch vehicle is uh, scheduled to pass over Australia at about the 50 minute mark, which is in three minutes. 50 minute compares to the 30 hours that it took by commercial airline to get here from the east coast of Australia. And I'm sure being on the launch vehicle this evening, you'd get a better view at 600 kilometres elevation than what we got through our commercial planes. Can I add my congratulations also to the ASAT team and your colleagues from Argentina on what is an extraordinary achievement and I trust that your satellite achieves all of the expectations that you have of it. Because launching satellites is never without risk and so a successful launch Notwithstanding the extraordinary uh, record of Ariane Space, nevertheless, a successful launch is a huge relief. A huge amount of, mu uh, of work has gone into this moment. Thousands of people on both sides of the Pacific and right across the world have worked tirelessly to make this launch successful. And look, it's a significant moment for all of us Australians, a truly historic moment for our country. Uh, we have a long and proud history in the space and satellite industry. And it goes back many decades, and understandably so. Australia is a large continent, a surface area just a bit smaller than that of Brazil. It's 23 and a half million people, a comparatively small population with a wide distribution that in the 21st century requires, simply must have access to high quality broadband connectivity. And for many of those people living in remote and regional areas, that can only be provided through a satellite platform and hence today's launch is such an important event for us. It is the, last, the latest chapter in our long history of involvement in the space industry. SkyMaster will provide broadband access, as Stefan mentioned this, to our remote areas, our bush, um, our, outba our outback to which Australia and Australians have a deep cultural attachment. In many ways, the fortunes of our country are very much linked with the land. The bush may be sparsely populated, but it has contributed huge prosperity for Australia, and NBN will now help the bush and the outback and its primary industries operate more efficiently and productively. And Australians will be able to live in remote areas, in regional communities, and yet still be economically active via the connectivity that the space uh, platform uh, will provide. New opportunities will clearly arrive in business, in education, in health and social care. And the launch of this, the successful launch of this satellite, uh, satellite vehicle this evening will revolutionise broadband in the bush in Australia, delivering the best ever broadband experience for regional, rural and remote Australians. And in some cases there will be communities who will have been connected to the broadband for the first time. Now, the National Broadband Network has been a very political uh, project in Australia, I'm sure in Argentina, politics does not get in the way of your, uh, your uh, projects of this kind. Um, 
we have been subject to a very uh, high level of political and media scrutiny uh, at the National Broadband Network because it's a very big nation building uh, project. But today's launch is the culmination, the successful culmination of five years of hard work, including the construction of 10 ground stations across the Australian continent. We are going to be a leader, a world leader in remote and rural broadband and provision. And while some people talk about connecting the unconnected, NBN is actually going to do something about it, as you would expect of us in Australia. Finally, a huge thanks to our satellite team at NBN who have pulled off this project and I know have been taking pictures in the control room. They have delivered a large project, a cost, a total cost to us of about $1.2 billion US, a project on time and on budget. It really is in, in this day and age a real achievement and they deserve and I'd like to offer them huge congratulations. Also many thanks to our important partners in this launch, Space Systems Laurel, is now tracking the satellite. Our colleague has confirmed that they've identified the, the, the separated uh, SkyMaster uh, satellite successfully. We'd like to thank Ariane Space and Biosat for their hard work on this project. And together with our partners, NBN has delivered an extraordinary change to the lives of hundreds of thousands of regional and rural Australians. If I'm allowed to, to kind of adapt a phrase, today has been an important step for NBN, but a giant leap for regional and rural Australia and Australians. Thank you very much. Good evening. Um, allow me to start with a personal comment. After uh, having been a uh, 40 years veteran, of this industry, having delivered 50 satellites and witnessed their launch from this same place. I was extremely pleased to witness the passion of our co-passenger, RSAT. Congratulations, passion and dedications are the key for success. So I wish you another 50 satellites in the future. Um, it has been an honor, of course, to be part of the uh, Australian Government Visionary um, Initiative to provide universal broadband services to uh, their large continent. As you know, the internet is now part of our life, like water, electricity, and uh, oxygen. And satellites are an extremely efficient uh, tool uh, to provide uh, those kind of services. Uh, the satellites that we design, uh, we have one in our Palo Alto factory, uh, waiting for a launch vehicle, are identical, and there are two of the uh, uh, world most advanced broadband satellites. They provide over 100 uh, spot beams over the Australian continent, small one in the uh, uh, coastal area where most of the capacity is needed and the population is and larger beams every place else uh, throughout the continent. Um, I also like to uh, thank, of course, uh, MBN chairman, uh, who is here with us uh, today, um, the CEO, uh, Bill Morrow, who is, uh, I believe, in Sydney, and the uh, uh, entire uh, MBN team. But also, I'd like to thank um, from a distance, uh, the former uh, Minister of Communication, Malcolm uh, Turnbull, another visionary uh, important element uh, of the Australian politics, uh, who is now uh, Prime Minister. Uh, what can I say? Thank you, Stefan. Um, as I said many other times, uh, you guys have the ability to show it to us that it's so easy to launch a satellite. Uh, as most of us know, it's not. And that is a testament of your professional competence and the ability to execute program with uh, precision of uh, clockwork. Um, I'd like to say something about uh, our milestone with uh, the SkyMaster. is the number 100 platform 
that we launch. Uh, basically, the architecture is the same today as it was in 1989, um, even if obviously it's much larger and much more capable. Um, and of course, this uh, not only is a testimony to the evolution of our product uh, at SSL, but also of what this industry is capable of doing. Only a couple of decades ago, uh, that same platform at three kilowatts and 1,300 kilograms was considered one of the largest satellites. Now it's 25 kilowatts, like this satellite we just launched, and uh, over 6.5 metric tons. So thank you um, again to all the teams uh, represented here for this great event and this great success. Thank you very much. Bueno, buenas tardes a todos y a todas. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank the Argentine delegation, which has supported this endeavor and which has supported us today. I would like to thank Julio De Vido, the minister and uh, the French ambassador to Argentina, uh, the various governors and members of parliament and high representatives and all those who are with us today and who supported us today. I think that it's the perfect time to thank Nestor Kirchner for his political decision as well as current president Cristina Kirchner. RSAT 2 has just made a big step and uh, I'm glad to say that we've already been able to communicate with the satellite in Benavides. We've received the first signals. So everything is all right. Everything is going as planned. Now we still have a month's work to do. We need to bring the satellite to its final position to carry out commissioning tests. And once this is done, we'll cover orbital position 81 degrees west. And this is very important for us because this is part of RSAT's raison d'etre. In its articles of, of association, it is stated that RSAT is created to create orbital positions allocated to Argentina with Argentinian-made satellites. So once we have done that, this will be a first step which was uh, provided for since the inception of RSAT. This is a key moment when orbital positions needed to be defended for Argentina and the planning ministry under the aegis of Julio De Vido made this possible. It made it possible to defend our sovereign orbital positions. Thanks to government decisions to defend a, a state-led satellite industry. Right now, this industry is robust and the whole world recognizes it. Just two weeks ago, RSAT received an award given by the space industry, uh, the best newcomer award for the launch of RSAT-1, as well as for the insurance policies that were bought for this satellite at a very good price. We were therefore able to design and build two geostationary satellites 
And this progress will benefit the people. Our SAT 1 is now working fully. 30% of our SAT 2 capacity is already being booked. And in concrete terms, it may be said that 2,500 rural schools are now, collected, are now connected. They're provided with internet and telephone connectivity with this satellite, and 25,000 households can have access to free-to-air digital television. Scientists in Antarctica are also connected and they can talk to their families. These are just a few concrete examples of what satellites can do as well as the decision, the political decision to manufacture these satellites for the people. What is the next step? As we saw today, we are formalizing the RSAT-3 project with the agreement that we've just signed with Air and Space, so that in 2019 we will launch our next satellite, satellite which will also be successfully launched from here, of course. But this is not magic. This is the outcome of government decisions, and it's been made possible thanks to the work of thousands of people, the teams at INVAP, RSAT and SEATSA, whom I'd like to thank and congratulate and who made this reality possible tonight. I would also like to thank Arian Space for this 68th consecutive uh, success. Air and space, we've launched our uh, two satellites into space. These technological developments are not just a technological matter. This is technology applied to the people, technology which is inclusive for the 40 million Argentines. These satellites were designed to cover the whole country to provide the whole region with services where it previously was not possible. This is their value added. In less than one year, children have been able to witness these two launches. They saw rockets carrying Argentine satellites into space thanks to Argentinian decisions and work, and these things will stick in the hearts and minds of these young children. This shows that we can do incredible things in our country. To conclude, once again, I would like to thank you and we'll continue our work. Buenas tardes a todos. Good evening, uh, everyone. Voy a ser muy breve. Agradecer a las autoridades de I'll be brief. I would like to colegas, thank Arian uh, Space. I would like to thank Australia, our colleagues. Argentinian colleagues who built Sky, Australian colleagues who built Sky Master, as well as the Argentinian delegation. On behalf of our president, I would like to thank the workers of INVEP and RSAT who allowed this satellite to reach its uh, position at 81 degrees west. I would like to thank the French authorities, the people, the employees and friends, all the people working here at Arian Space and at the Space Center that we visited today. I would like to thank you all for watching this launch today. As Matthias said, we've received signals from the satellite in Benavides already. And we'll continue working, and as Stefan Israel said, we are confident Argentina, Argentine, Argentina sorry, places its trust in its partners. We want to be active into, in our own future, especially in the space business. We'll carry on working with you. We have projects up until 2023, and in 2019, 
we're going to launch our set three with technological innovations which have already been planned by our set. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so thank you very much one more time to uh, our customers, partners for their success. We will be back here in uh, CSG for uh, two other nations and uh, very important nations. We will uh, launch for uh, Arabsat and we will launch for ISRO at the beginning of November. It will be Arabsat 6B uh, in upper position and GSAT 15 in lower position. So thank you very much, enjoy this evening, and uh, see you soon here in CSG. Thanks a lot. And again, that was Stefan Israel making his comments, and uh, it has been an incredible night here, another Ariane 5 mission has uh, come to an end. This one, the 68th success in a row. And there is the replay again. It's been my honor to serve as your host again this evening. First time I came to Koru was in 2007, and I look forward to many opportunities to share the excitement of a launch from French Guiana with you in the future again. Uh, we say congratulations to everybody involved in VA-226, especially uh, the folks from Skymuster and RSAT-2. And Bailey, you've got your bird in the sky and enjoy it tonight. For the world's number one satellite launch provider, Arian Space, I'm Harry Thibodeau, and I bid you good night from Coru, French Guiana.